Hey y'all, it's Misty with My Paper Cuts and I'm coming on today with a Saturday morning make share. This is a collaboration that is hosted by the beautiful Jill Norwood. I have linked her channel down below. She encourages everyone to take some time each week to do some creating and to share it and upload it on Saturday if possible. If not, upload it whenever you like. Just use the hashtag SatMornMakes. It is open to everyone and you don't have to be on YouTube. You can share on Instagram or whatever social media platform you prefer. So I haven't created a little bit every week for a few weeks. Um, I don't want to bore everybody with all the details, but um, I have a very demanding job and it's been very, very busy and I've done a lot of overtime recently. So I've done more shopping than creating. Um, I do have some de-stash shares that I do want to post. I have a lot more than that that I've purchased, but I have a couple special ones I'm sharing. And um, these are really the only things I have made in the past few weeks. And it was kind of an experiment of sorts, and it's an experiment that has gone slightly wrong, but I'm going to share because P is making me. <laughs> I had already put all these away and said I wasn't going to share because I don't really like them. But P has insisted, and anybody who knows P knows better than to mess with the ginger. So, <laughs> without any further ado, um, I was going through my card stash, and I realized there's some, some types of cards that I need to make more of, and one of them was birthday, and it just so happened that last month, the Simon Says card kit was birthday themed. And so it came with this awesome stamp set with all these happy birthday sentiments, along with these really simple um, images of presents and cakes and balloons. So I decided that was my sign that I needed to do birthday. So in honor of that, I went and got into my birthday bin, which I store major themes in bins, and the bin will barely close. And the biggest reason for that was I have a couple of these and everybody who has Hobby Lobby recognizes these things. This one is from 2012, so um, it is very, very old. I actually have two that are very, very old. And back in the day when I first started card making, I thought this was the way to go because they were card size. But I've realized since that I don't really like these because most of the images on these are horizontal and I prefer to make vertical cards. Sandy Allnott calls the verticals hot dog versus hamburger. I prefer the hot dog cards. Um, but I, these are so bulky. This one has 80 sheets and it was cardstock weight, so it was pretty thick. And there's another one that's similar but different colors um, that I'm gonna try to use up next. So I wanted to try to use this so that my bin would be a little less crowded and I could crank out a bunch of birthday cards all at once. So, and I did it, I used up all these papers, so I'm pretty proud of that. Um, there are a few that were saved for other images I colored months ago, and they're in my coloring bin, but they're already cut out and ready to go, so I was just using what was left of this, which was most of the pad. I actually have 32 cards that I made. Um, to make it easier, I dug out my old binder. Um, when I first started making cards, I donated to Operation Write Home, and Sandy had prepared a lot of card sketches that she made free to everyone. You can still download these online. Um, and it's a nice PDF that you can just print out really simply. And so I started flipping through and I found two, or two horizontal ones that I could use up most of the paper with because like I said, it's, the images are in a horizontal um, orientation. So, and these two just happen to be next to each other, so it made it easy for me to show you guys. It is sketch number 20, and there's the measurements if you're interested. And this is sketch number 18, and there's those measurements. But like I said, you can get all of her sketches on the Operation Write Home. Just search Operation Write Home card sketches, and you'll have a link to be able to print out the PDFs. So, already I'm working with paper that I didn't like. And then I was shopping at Ross one day and everybody knows on, if you go on the wrong day, you're gonna be in line for an hour. Um, and I was wasting time waiting for the line to die down and I found these. And I, it, they, they made me curious because I am a Copic girl. I love my Copic markers. I also have some Spectrum Noir markers. I don't like those so much. I do know I prefer brush tip. I saw these had brush tip and what really caught my eye was this premium wearproof tips. I also liked the design of the barrels on these. They 
they're triangular, but they have this nice little spot to hold them. So I was very curious and they were very affordable. There are 64 markers in here and they were $16.99. So I thought, why not? I'll give it a shot. If I don't like them, I can give them to the school or to one of the teachers at least. Um, I hate them. <laughs> um, the very first time ever, I always color, pre-color images and I store them in sheets and I'll lay them on top of each other. And I colored all these, I let them dry for two days, spread out on my desk, and then I stacked them up and got them ready to cut out on my brother's scan and cut. When I finally could come in here and cut them out on my brother's scan and cut, I pulled the first one off and it was fine. But the next layers, the color had bled through yellow on the layer underneath it. I have never had that with Copics or Spectrums. I used the same paper I always use, and it didn't matter what the color was, underneath it bled through onto whatever was under it yellow and I was shocked um I don't know what's in these that makes it do that but if you purchase more inexpensive alcohol markers just be aware that if you have things stored together they could bleed onto one another um, I was able to salvage the cards okay because I was using my colorless blender to try to get rid of anything that did bleed through um, you can see it on some of these cards, um, which I will see if I see any that are blatantly obvious and I'll show them to you. But just be forewarned, if you color and you store them for later, don't have them on top of each other without something in between. And I don't even know if I would trust it then. Anyway, I digress. So I will share the cards. So what I did was I colored all of the images and I had um, them in sets of eight. And then I made eight cards with each image. So... This is two of the presents. One of them is popped up on foam. Um, it's on a rectangle that's cut out with a pierced rectangle die. Like I said, these were already put away, so I don't have all the stuff I used, but I think everybody has rectangle dies and you know, you could get pierced or stitching. Um, this is the sketch 20 that I showed you. Um, so they, the background paper and then these two layering pieces are both are all from the paper pad. So I was able to use up a lot of it. And these are just some clear enamel dots. The Wish Big also came from the stamp set. I really limited my supplies trying to use this up. On the inside of this one, it says from all of us, happy birthday. It's on a black card base, which all of these are. And I just switched up envelope colors. So these four here with the balloon paper have purple, purple envelopes. And as you can see, the colors in the background were mixed up because I only had a few sheets of these glitter pieces. So I had to mix and match with scraps. This one is the other four with the same images with the text background. And this one is the same on the inside. So, and then I mix that up with the teal envelope. And I'll share why I do that at the end here. And then I also used that Wish Big Sentiment with the grouping of the two presents with the cake. That is one stamp on here. This is like all together. Those two presents were by themselves. And it's basically the exact same thing, but this one has the three across. So this is the other set or the other sketch and on the inside of this one this will be the best year yet happy birthday and that one has green envelopes with the text celebrate background and then this one has the white text background again with the three across with the wish big again and again with the teal envelopes and same sentiment on the inside so there's those four so that's those eight. And then with the group of balloons, I actually um, did a little punch with a tiny bow and put the enamel dot on the bow. But this one has the big happy birthday sentiment from the stamp set. And here, hopefully you guys will pick it up. You see where that yellow is right there? That's the bleeding I was talking about. It's so annoying. And that's after I took a colorless blender to it. So it does not go away. So like I said, just use caution if you buy those less expensive alcohol markers. This one has the party hat background. And on the inside it says, it's your birthday, let's celebrate. 
So there's those four with the purple envelopes. Oh, whoops, I left one in a different stack. There are four, I promise. <laughs> and then the same thing, but with this really cool zigzag background that is really glittery. And it's the same sentiment on the inside, this time with teal. I thought teal went really well with that paper. So there's those four. I'll try to keep those together. Sorry, OCD. And then the last set of eight, I used the cake and I used two of the balloons, the single balloons, which is right here. And the birthday wishes sentiment and more of the clear enamel dots. And this one again is the sketch with the three small squares in the background with the candle pattern paper. This one says, may your day be magical just like you, happy birthday. So, there's four with the candles and teal envelopes. I had a lot of those blue envelopes, so that's why I used so many. And last but not least is this one with the kind of, I don't know, burst or asterisk or whatever you want to call it, background. Um, birthday wishes again. Same sentiment. May your day be magical just like you. And this one has this kind of orangey envelope. So, like I said, I'm not super thrilled with these cards, but I got them done. I think some people will like them. I think part of my problem is I don't really like super bright colors, and the markers made me so mad, and I didn't like the paper, so I went into this with a bad attitude, but they're done. So, the last thing I want to share real quick, if you guys could oblige me, is how I store my cards. So, P and I were talking about this, and I think she kind of wanted to see what I'm talking about. So, this is a clear one, but I buy these DVD storage bins. They are 15 inches long and they do come in clear and I think white. They used to come in black. I don't, I prefer the black, but they don't carry those anymore. But I just wanted to show A2 cards fit in here really well. And so that's why I store mine this way. Each one will hold, depending on how dimensional the cards in it are, each one will hold like 70 to 100 cards. Um, so like here's here's 32 cards and I still have all that room right there. Um, but it, these are what I um, have on a big shelf and I keep my cards in. It makes it real easy to flip through them. I'm going to start adding dividers between the ones that are different because like right here it's hard to t or it's easy to tell because the envelopes are different colors. But um, you can't always tell where like one card ends and another begins. So I'm, I'm going to make dividers and then I'm going to, we'll start labeling the type of card on the front because I do want to do some craft sales and I want to have my cards as portable as possible. Plus they are protected in here. I used to store them in cardboard and then the cardboard got wet. Don't want to talk about that and destroyed hundreds of my cards. So this is what I do now and I really, really love it. Um, I've mentioned in the past, I have about 3,000 handmade cards right now. So yeah, <laughs> this is a really good storage system for me. So P, that's what it looks like. Um, and again, a word of caution if any of you are looking at those alcohol markers that are out there at Ross and, and other places. Sorry this video rambled so long. I know it's been a while, so I think I just needed to talk. I don't know. But have a wonderful day, you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.